Welcome to another moment in the Word. I'm so grateful that you've joined with us, and I'm so grateful for your prayers, because it is prayer that makes the difference. It's our correspondence with the Lord. It's His Spirit that is guiding us into all truth. It is Him that is enabling us to understand the things that God has revealed to us. And I praise God that His Spirit dwells within us. And because He dwells within us, we are able to have that confidence, not just in our heads, not just in our hearts even, but literally all of us to feel, to sense, to know, to understand, and to connect with the one who has redeemed us. And so we're looking especially now at John chapter 5 and verses 26 and 27. And it reads like this, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has given to the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Now, looking at that, you may say, well, what is that, and why is that so important, and why am I excited about the passage? Actually, by taking the word word by word, part by part, that we begin to really appreciate. That's what meditation is. Meditation is chewing. It is taking and thinking through and allowing the Lord to give us understanding as to what he is teaching. We have to understand the context. When you look at that word for that's there, actually that word for means because or since. It's connecting with what went before. We remember that verses 24 and 25 began with amen, 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 verily, verily, truly, truly. And then he emphasizes the spiritual resurrection and the physical resurrection the spiritual judgment, and the physical judgment. So this connects for, and then he says, the Father has life in himself. So now it explains the resurrection and the life. Remember, however, the larger context is that Jesus has healed this man on the Sabbath, who was paralyzed for 38 years, a picture of Israel, and the Jewish leaders, they're furious that he would act, he would heal, he would work on the Sabbath day. And not only that, but Jesus has equated himself. You can see it, verse 18, one with the Father. And that is really infuriating him that he is claiming to be God. Jesus is explaining what that means and why he is saying it. He is affirming it. He's not defensive. He is declaring that he is God. So now we see, as the Father has life in himself, God the Father is life. He gives life to everything. Jesus is God. Everything depends on on your understanding of who he is. He is God. He is declaring that God, in his very nature, is life. It's intrinsic. It's a part of him. It's essential. It is an attribute that is inextricably a part of who he is. God breathed into Adam, and he became a living soul. Adam was just a piece of clay. That's, in fact, what his name means. Adam means clay. But he was a mold. He was just simply a body without life. It says in Genesis chapter 1, everything that has life, it came from God. It doesn't matter if it's a plant or a fish or something that is an animal on the earth or man himself. All life comes from God. The Jewish people understood that. They understood that God was the giver of all life. We find in Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 10 
but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God. He is the everlasting King. And at his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nations shall not be able to abide in his indignation. Notice how life and judgment go together because unfortunately sin results in death. And so, therefore, God opposes sin because it destroys what he has created. That's why the judgment is now related to the two. In the two verses we looked before, we saw resurrection, we saw judgment. And we see it again here in this passage. And Jesus is saying, the Father has life. He is now going to say that the Son has life. Notice how this happens. It's in verse 26 again. The Father has given to the Son to have life in himself. Now, the interesting thing here is that that word given, it is the word, it's, it's in the aorist tense. Aorist means an event that occurred in the past. It's historical aorist. That means a specific point in the past. And so then we ask, well, does that mean that Jesus did not exist with the Father? No, he forever is. He was with the Father in the very beginning. All things were created by him, and without him was not anything made. He and the Father are one. There is no doubt or question about that. In fact, he is the I am. He is the Yahweh Vahe. He is the one who was, who is, and shall be. He is the eternal now. He is the one who has infinite in time, space, and all that is in him. He and the Father are one. So that's important to know. When Moses heard from the burning bush, I am that I am, it was Jesus in the bush. And he is saying, to, to uh, Moses, you tell Pharaoh, I am sent you. In other words, Pharaoh's days are numbered. Egypt's days are numbered. Rome's days are numbered. The United States' days are numbered. And all of the nations of the world were all numbered. But the one who is the I am, he is forever. He is eternal. And that's what we see here. Jesus is the I am. And now we find in 1 John 2, 1, 2, it says, Life was manifested in him, and we've seen it, and we bear witness, and we declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father, but it was made manifest to us. When was it made manifest? At the Incarnation. That's then the historical heiress. That's when the life was made manifest, was given to the Son. It is not that the son didn't have life before, but he was, more, he was made of a woman, born of a woman. He became man. That's so important, and that explains, it's answering why the Jewish leaders don't get it. They don't get it because they think it was a man that became God. No, Jesus is saying, I am God who became man. That is so important. It is the incarnation he's referring to. So he says that he has life in himself. If he has life, then he can give life. Just as he gave life to Adam and to all breathing things, living things, so he is able to give life now. But the difference is, you see, in the garden, there was life, and that life was physical and because of sin, death came. In the day in which he ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Adam died, separated from God. And what Jesus now gives us is the second creation, a new creation in Christ that we might live and live forever. And so we now see this, that we have the Son is given that he has life in himself. Notice verse 27. And it was also given, historical aorist again, authority. You'll love this. The word authority is exousia in the Greek. Now take that word apart. Ex, E-X, just like you have exit, means the way out. Out of what? 
exousia, ousia, that part is a me in the Greek. Now, a me is the to be verb. In other words, out of the to be, out of the I am. The one who is the eternal God, it's out of him. That's where the authority comes. And that authority is the one who has the right to judge. Now, what is that judgment? I want to say that because Jesus is man, he became he is God who became man. He now has the authority. He has the ability to be your judge. How does that play out? We find in Hebrews, and it's in chapter 4, verse 15, that we have a great high priest who can be and uh, uh, can empathize, sympathize with our weakness. Why? Because he was at all points tested like we. He was tested because he's put on our flesh. He identified with us. And so now he can be our savior. And being our savior, he who is God now can take the judgment. And he did it on the cross for you and for me. And so it says that all authority was given to him to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man, because he is the now, that word does not exist in the Greek. It's really interesting. That phrase is used 56 times in the scriptures. Very seldom and never in John's gospel do we ever have the definite article, the. It is simply son of man because he is son of man, he is. And in other words, he has taken on our flesh. He is human. And in being human, he is now able to execute judgment. He can be your judge. He identifies with you. And therefore, he is your high priest who now has suffered on the cross in your behalf and rose again the third day. Or he is your judge and you have no excuse. He knows what you've gone through. In him was life and the life was the light of man. That he showed you how to live and you rebelled against him and you have no right. The judge understands he wore your skin and you, if you rebel against him, now he stands before you. And you are in judgment. Notice what it says in Daniel. This is in chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. He says, I was watching in the night visions. And behold, one like the Son of Man, coming in the clouds of heaven. He was the Ancient of Days. He is God. And they brought him near before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and kingdom. And all the people, the nations, the languages shall serve him. You know, it's interesting. Adam in the garden was given a responsibility. That responsibility was to have dominion on the earth. That's the chief end of man. That's the purpose for which we were created, to have dominion. And what did we do? Adam rebelled rejected God's word, and as a result, lost the authority to rule. What then happens in Revelation chapter 5? Unto him the Lamb was given the right to open the scroll and to release its seals, and in that he was able then to rule on the earth and to have dominion. The very same word we find back in Genesis. He is because he died for you. He identified with you. He is God who put on flesh. I pray today that you know that you have a Savior. Not only is he God, but he is God who knows your infirmities. He died in your place. He paid your penalty. And if you don't know him and you reject him, then I want you to also know you have no answer before him. He knows, and you have rejected him. I pray that's not the case for you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word.
And thank you for the meditations that you give to us and the understanding. And now, Father, for the opportunity to live it. Might our lives so reflect him that it would cause many to have hope and to receive him. And also for those who would reject to understand the authority that comes from you alone, Father, that you have now by your spirit placed within us. We ask, Father, for your blessing in Jesus' holy name. Amen.